Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, this is Dr. Kondrat, and thank you so much for joining me during this coaching call. And we have a very exciting topic to go over, and that's light therapy. And I have just returned from Paris, France, where I'm studying with a Dr. Christian Agrippar, who's a brilliant French physician uh, who has an extremely large organization in France, over 500 doctors who are using light in a much different manner than what I'm doing. And so I'm hoping to learn from him different aspects to uh, help you with your vision problems and your health. And I plan to go over a little bit of those uh, new techniques with you today. So let's begin. And of course, just to review the way this webinar works. Um, you are able to ask questions. You have a control panel on your right hand side, or it may be on your left. And uh, what you do is um, just type in a question and send it to me, or you can also uh, raise your hand. There's a little hand button. So it's just like being in class where you raise the hand and the teacher will call on you. So let's begin. So um, light therapy, color therapy is really not new. Uh, the ancient Egyptians used gems as a means of healing, and they would shine light through different gem crystals to give different wavelengths of light uh, to treat uh, various diseases. And they did recognize that certain colors of light, certain wavelengths of light had a distinct therapeutic effect. Uh, the Greeks, the ancient Greeks, built solariums uh, using ultraviolet light and sunlight for the treatment of tuberculosis. And it wasn't until the late 19th and early 20th century that uh, there were uh, researchers like Babbitt, Pleasanton, Pancoast, and Dinshaw. Many of you are familiar with Dinshaw's work, the Indian uh, who wrote extensively about different wavelengths of light. And they felt that uh, colored light applied to the skin uh, could have a physiological effect and curative effect. And even now we're learning, uh, in fact, right now, the low level laser or the cold lasers are very popular in medicine for treating various conditions. Uh, we know about... Um, uh, SAD, seasonal affective disorders, on um, how necessary light is, especially circadian rhythms, and syntonics. And syn syntonic comes from the word syntony, using light uh, to balance the body and to stimulate healing. And that's essentially um, the primary method that I'm using light, is using syntonic light therapy. I'm a member of the College of Syntonics. In fact, I'm the only ophthalmologist, eye surgeon, that's board certified in syntonic light therapy. And for those of you that might be interested, we're having our annual meeting the first weekend in May, and I'll give you information about that. It's an exciting meeting. It's open to the public, and it's one of my favorite meetings of the year. You'll meet eye doctors from all over the world who will discuss different aspects of light and healing. So uh, if you are available, come down to Florida. That's the first weekend in May. It's going to be held at the Dolphin Beach Resort, and it's the College of Syntonic Light Meeting. Now, syntonics was first developed in the 20s uh, by um, uh, a Dr. Spittler. And Dr. Spittler was an ophthalmologist, and he applied light frequencies in his practice as part of the management of his patients. And he coined the term syntonics from syntony, which means bring to balance. And he felt that all disease was related to imbalances of the autonomic nervous system. And if you balance the autonomic nervous system, you would restore balance in the body. And of course, we know that stress can 
cause an adverse effect on the body. And by reducing stress, relaxing the body, uh, there can be a dramatic improvement. I really believe that the body will not heal unless stress is reduced. So many of the things that we do in treating your eye problem is reducing stress. The color therapy, the microcurrent, um, reassuring you that your body does have the ability to heal. Unfortunately, modern medicine many times puts you in a stress state. If you don't take these eye drops, you're going to go blind. If you don't have the surgery, you're going to go blind. Uh, and I believe there are many, many different ways to treat disease. And the most important is to treat the underlying problem. And one of those underlying issues is stress. So this is kind of sums up the autonomic nervous system in color. And if you look on the left, you see the red end. And if you look on the blue or the, the, the right end, you see blue. Uh, or purple. So the left end, the red colors uh, are hot colors. They add energy to the body and they stimulate the sympathetic system. The blue end or purple end stimulates the parasympathetic system or the system of relaxation and they're cooling colors. Now at any given time, an individual can be on either end of the spectrum. So this is kind of a dynamic state. Most of you that have a chronic eye problem have a lack of sympathetic tone. Even though you may be in a stressful state, you've been in a stressful state for so long, you have adrenal fatigue. Your adrenals are burned out. So we need to put a little bit of healing energy in. So the majority of people need green, yellow, or lemon. And... Um, if you have an acute problem, and I'll talk more about this, like inflammation, swelling, then you have to quiet the body. And that's why we use the blue end. Now the diagnosis and the color that we select is based on the pupil response. When I look at your eye underneath the microscope, I look at the size of your pupil and the way it responds to light. If you're in a sympathetic state, you have a large pupil. Most people that I see that are over the age of 60 or 70 have a very tiny pupil. That's because they've lost their sympathetic tone. Um, and so we have to add more energy into the body. Uh, we also look at your visual fields. We look at the white visual fields, the motion visual fields, and the color visual fields. This can correlate very well to the state that your body is in the state of your autonomic nervous system. We also look at physiological function, emotional stress, toxins, trauma, metabolic and endocrine dysfunction. So we look at all these things to determine the right color therapy for you. So we factor all these things before we determine a color. And these are the colors again that we use. In syntonics, we use combinations. We use ruby, a lemon, uh, which is a combination of green and yellow, turquoise, which is a combination of green and blue and violet. Typically, uh, if you have a chronic problem, we give you lemon. If you have an acute problem, swelling, we give you turquoise. Uh, like if you have a macular hemorrhage or macular swelling, it's turquoise. But the majority of people are getting lemon because they need some energy into the system. This end down here is good for the treatment of pain. The violet end is for the treatment of pain. We use ruby or red to really stimulate if you have optic atrophy or extreme loss of function. We use the red to try to stimulate. Now light has a profound effect and it affects all these levels. The atomic level, cellular, hormonal, and autonomic. And let's talk a little bit about each one of those. When I was in college and I was studying chemistry, we used a spectrometer to analyze substances. And we would put a gas inside a device and it would emit a certain light 
wave or light frequency. And all um, atoms and molecules emit a certain light frequencies. So not only do they emit a certain frequency, they also absorb a certain frequency. So when we have, when you have light therapy and you're uh, subjecting yourself to a certain wavelength of light, it is affecting your cells on the on a, on a autonomic level. There's a Dr. Tina Karu from Russia who's actually looked at this and has demonstrated that light does, is absorbed uh, by certain molecular structures in the cell, which causes a chemical reaction or a cascade reaction to produce energy. So when you're doing your light therapy, don't think that it's rather passive. It's just to relax your body. Don't think it's just to relax you and it's like a type of meditation. It is causing a physiological change in your body, uh, a profound physiological change. Now on the cellular level, uh, Dr. Ott observed that when you shine light towards cells, that the cellular elements, there's organelles uh, in the cell actually move towards the light or away from the light. So each cell in our body responds to light. And the same thing in plants. Uh, plants, uh, the, the cells in plants have been observed, it's documented when you shine light into those cells, there is movement. The cells recognize the light and there are certain changes. And I, as I mentioned, Tina Carew uh, did extensive research on different wavelengths of light, different type of light, on how light affects the body on the cellular level. Um, and she documented that specific frequency of, frequencies of light aid in the healing of wounds. So when you do have a wound, they're characterized by being acidic, hypoxic, and not functioning. And of course, light drives them more towards oxidation, a balanced pH, and vitality. And this is essentially what microcurrent does. Uh, microcurrent adds electrons. So when a substance is in an acidic state and you're doing microcurrent, you're making it more alkaline, you're reducing the, <coughs> the hypoxic state, and you're driving it more towards oxidation. And she demonstrated that this effect is maintained following light stimulation. So even though you're doing a 10 minute light therapy, it continues to have an effect. And we have demonstrated this in glaucoma patients that when you do light therapy and it lowers the pressure, uh, that pressure lowering effect seems to last for six to eight hours and then you have a gradual rise in pressure. There's a lot of research now in low level laser surgery. Um, in the management of macular degeneration, there was a study done in Berlin, cold laser. Um, and there was also a study, uh, the positive effect that cold laser had with glaucoma in terms of restoring the optic nerve. And it's also used by dentists following oral surgery to improve the rate of recovery. Now it's interesting, Dr. Tina Carew looked at the difference between coherent light laser and normal light. And she discovered that the two are equally effective. And let me repeat that. You don't have to buy a fancy cold laser. It's just as effective as normal light. So laser light is coherent. All the light is lined up precisely to make it a much stronger light. And normal light is scattered. When you look at a light bulb, that light is scattered in many, many directions, so it's not as strong. But she demonstrated there's no difference on the cellular level. The only difference is that the cold laser has deeper penetration. So if you're deep, uh, treating uh, a bone problem, uh, a deep musculoskeletal, the cold laser will have 
have more effect. Hormonal changes also occur with laser, especially syntonics. When you're looking at a laser light, it's illuminating the blood in the choroid. The choroid is in the back of the eye and the choroid is covered by the retina. The retina is transparent. So essentially, when you're doing light therapy, you are shining light directly on the blood elements and that is distributed throughout the body. So hemoglobin in particular absorbs light energy. Hemoglobin and, and chlorophyll are very similar in structure and they are both altered by light. On the autonomic level, that's another effect. Uh, colors can selectively stimulate the nervous system. Red and green interacts with the sympathetic, the fight or flight. Blue and yellow interacts with the parasympathetic. So this is very, very important for treating disease, according to Spittler uh, in his book, Sintony that the most essential thing that you need to accomplish is balancing the autonomic nervous system. And in many situations, the body will repair itself and heal itself. Now, we do look at the visual fields and the visual fields, it's done on a device called a campimeter. And that's where we use the crayons. And I think you're all familiar with that, where we look at movement. We don't use white, we use a black marker in our case. And then we look at green, red, and blue. Uh, we don't really look at blind spot enlargements, but we do look at the size of these colored fields and that determines the energy of your bo uh, body. So the white visual field or the outer visual field is awareness, kind of, um, movement and survival. Remember when I did the field and I said, tell me when you see some movement. The colored visual fields are more informational processing. And this is detailed information about the cognitive system and your ability to integrate information. And many people after light therapy get an expansion of their colored field. Uh, the light helps them to integrate information much better. So not only are you seeing better, but you're able to integrate information. You're able to function better. After color therapy, typically, if it's a good color for you, you're going to be calmer. You're going to be sleeping better. You're going to be more aware of your own and others' feelings. You'll be more aware of the environment. So in a way, we're looking not only for improvement of your vision, we're looking at an improvement of your mental and emotional health, which in some cases I think is more, more important than your vision. Uh, because once we heal the underlying problem, once we balance your body and heal the, heal the mental and emotional state, then the physical improvement will follow. When we choose a color, uh, we're initially determining whether it's an acute problem or a chronic. Acute, what I mean by acute, it's recent onset and usually it's inflammation. Oh, you bang your head, you have a head injury, you have an accident, uh, you have a macular hemorrhage or a sudden onset of visual loss or a marked elevation of your pressure. These are all acute. And we treat with the parasympathetic end of the spectrum, uh, the violet and turquoise end. Most of people that I see have a chronic problem. It's longstanding and it's embedded. It's locked into your body. And they also have adrenal fatigue or adrenal burnout. You've been in a sympathetic state for so long, there's nothing left. So we have to treat, we have to add energy. So we're treating more with the ruby or the lemon end of the spectrum. Now, the way the light is treated, uh, we treat you for 10 to 20 minutes in the office and um, we treat you for three consecutive days in the office. Um, but most of you will go home with your home base unit, which uses a small light device. 
and uh, you look at the light uh, for about 10 to 20 minutes per day. And we have found that syntonic phototherapy works very well for age-related macular degeneration. It reduces edema and it also cellular revitalization. Glaucoma, it lowers the pressure, improves the function of the optic nerve, and it also has a neuroprotective effect to prevent further damage. We've also had success in the treatment of iritis, dry eyes, and cataracts. The syntonic phototherapy is also used for TBI, that's traumatic brain injury, uh, amblyopia, binocular dysfunction, that's double vision or trouble focusing, and learning disorders. There's been an amazing amount of work using light therapy in treating autism, attention deficit disorder. So if you have grandchildren or you know of kids that have a problem learning, holding their attention, light therapy can be extremely valuable. And many of the members of the College of Syntonics are using uh, this approach to treat these kids. And you'll meet a lot of these doctors if you attend the meeting uh, the first weekend in May. So this is an example of what we use in the office. This is the photosynthesizer, uh, which is a device that generates a low level of light. Here's a picture of myself and Dr. Tina Carew. This picture was taken in Belgium when I met her. And her book is called The Ten Lectures on Basic Science of Laser Phototherapy. And these are some of the light combinations. The most common are the Mu Delta for a chronic syndrome. And then we have the Epsilon Omega. These are different filters that we use. And when we do the home treatment, uh, we've located a company in Belgium that actually produces these different color combinations for you to use. These, uh, this is an article that I published in the uh, Journal of Optometric Phototherapy, Homeopathic Syntonic Light Therapy in the Treatment of Glaucoma. And there was also an article published in the American Journal of Ophthalmology in 1948, using light to treat glaucoma. So if your eye doctor states he never heard of it, I'd be happy to give you a copy of the American Journal of Optometry article that you can give to him to show him that this was uh, printed in a peer review journal. And also more recently, I did a study. I duplicated the work that was done by Zaretska that was published in the American Journal of Ophthalmology. Now we are using the cold laser. And one thing that I've learned uh, new about the cold laser is uh, not only does it have the effects of syntonic light, but it seems like 810 nanometers, which is the red near end, stimulates ATP. And there's extensive research done in the laboratory looking at light on the cellular level, and they've actually demonstrated that this wavelength seems to improve ATP. What is ATP? That's the gasoline of the cell. You got more ATP, those cells are going to be working. You have an absence of ATP, the cells are dead. Also, it stimulates the lymph, which is necessary uh, to remove toxins from the body, uh, to fight infections and reduce inflammation. And also, it can stimulate stem cells. So now we're using the cold laser in three ways. One, we're using direct stimulation over the eye. Second, we're stimulating the lymph glands near the eye, which are on the neck. And we're stimulating the stem cells. And the stem cells are stimulated by application of light on the long bones of the body. Stem cells are produced in the long bone. So we use the shin bone or the lower leg bone um, because the laser light has to be close to the bone. And that's an area where the skin is kind of thin and there's not that much fat or muscle that you can put direct stimulation on the bone. Now, this is something really interesting. Let me just back up. You see the light. When you apply that light to your eye, my wife and I were doing a treatment and she said, honey, that's just like looking at the sun. And 
Dr. Bates had advocated that sunning is very effective for the eye. Now take a look at the sun on the left. It looks a lot like that cold laser. In fact, it is emitting about 8, 10 nanometers. So nature has given us a cold laser. Uh, when we see the setting sun and the rising sun, and of course in Florida, because we're close to the ocean, we get a very, very nice view of the setting sun, which lasts for a long period of time. And on the right is my friend, Mayer Schneider, who's a brilliant um, a massage therapist and vision educator. And he's a very, very big advocate of sunning. So stand looking at the sun, turn your head back and forth, and you'll see the illumination of the sun on your eye. Do this with closed eyes and do it for about 10, 15 minutes. And here's the cold laser. And these are some articles that show that Bates was right. These are articles that show that application of 810 nanometers of light energy, cold laser, to the eye does cause a positive effect. And here is a patient uh, receiving a cold laser treatment directly over the eye. And this is the cold laser stimulating the lymph glands that supply the eye. And here's the application of the cold laser to stimulate the stem cells. So this is something new in our practice. Now, the exciting thing is I met a brilliant French physician, uh, Dr. Christian Agrapar who's practicing a unique form of light therapy called chromatotherapy. Uh, unfortunately, Dr. Agrapar does not speak a word of English, but my wife is fluent in French. In fact, French is her mother tongue. It's her primary language. So I attended, I'm signed up for his two year course. I'm gonna be going to Paris, France every other month for two years to study with him. And he is going to be visiting us at the wellness center in Florida, which is kind of exciting. He really wants to be my coach to help me learn these newer techniques to help people with macular degeneration and glaucoma. So if any of you are interested in taking part in Dr. Akrapar's work, um, please give the office a call, talk to Nicole, and we can give you the information. We don't know his exact dates that he's coming, but he's also going to be working with me, reviewing charts and telling me what lights to use. He uses three methods, direct stimulation, ocular stimulation, and the acupuncture points. And uh, what is new to me is the business of using the acupuncture points. And he uses a combination of all three. He also uses a very narrow spectrum of non-coherent light. And Remember I talked about the syntonic light. The syntonic light is a combination. We use a combination of green and yellow or green and blue. So we have a broad spectrum. He uses a very narrow spectrum, precision use of light. And he also uses light in a more homeopathic approach, which I love because I'm a homeopathic doctor. And remember the main law in homeopathy is the law of similars. Like treats like. So in syntonics, if you have a lot of swelling, we use a cold color. If you have a lot of dryness and coldness, we use a warm color. Well, he uses the homeopathic approach. So if you have a lot of swelling and heat, he uses a color that gives heat. So this is entirely new to me. And he also treats with complementary colors. So if you look at a red light for a long period of time, when you close your eyes, you're going to see green. That's the complementary color. If you look at yellow for a long period of time and you close your eyes, you'll see blue. So he has uh, different formulas for treating with complementary colors. And here's the information on the annual uh, syntonic meeting. Uh, and give the office a call or you can go to their web address. It's going to be at the Dolphin Beach Resort. Rooms are very inexpensive, uh, 90 some dollars a night, May 30th to May the 3rd. And I'm going to be a keynote speaker. I'm going to be talking about ultraviolet blood irradiation. 
So that's kind of exciting. And here's some additional information. That's the website, Syntonic Phototherapy. Um, and this is recommended reading, uh, The Syntonic Principle by Harry Spittler. Light Medicine of the Future. And Dr. Jacob Lieberman is coming to the center. Um, and this is a once in a lifetime experience. He's gonna be coming for a weekend workshop. Um, I don't think I have the dates in this presentation, but give the office a call uh, for more information. And he's phenomenal. It's gonna be a weekend workshop for Dr. Lieberman. All right, well, that's all I have. So um, I'm open for questions. If you do have a question, please um, type it down below, okay? Or um, you can raise your hand uh, like you're in the classroom. And this is uh, being recorded. So if any of you, uh, you'll all be receiving a copy of this uh, presentation. And I'll also send you from information on the Jacob Lieberman and the Syntonic uh, Workshop. Okay, any questions? So I hope the webinar came through properly. Okay, I think I have a question, but I don't understand it. Is is this something like, let me just see here. Okay, is this something like the Color Me Healthy by Dr. Rowan? Uh, not really. Dr. Rowan has a series of uh, color plates, and he's essentially copied the information from Dr. Dinshaw. But the syntonic phototherapy is much different. And the um, chromatotherapy that I'm studying in France is much different. You know, it has to do with the precise wavelength. It has to do with the intensity. So it's more than color. I mean, you can look at blue, you know, for hours and it's not going to have any effect on your body. So it's a combination of the right intensity, the right wavelength, and where is it being delivered. Another question, how can red light help macular degeneration? Well, red light can help macular degeneration when it's applied properly. So red light can help in certain situations of macular degeneration. Number one, if you have extreme atrophy, I would not use red light if you have wet macular degeneration. Also red light, it should be cautioned because red light can put a lot of heat and energy into the eye, which may cause more harm. That's why I believe in gentle therapy, and I use more of a lemon. Lemon for chronic macular degeneration is green-yellow, so it's a slight amount of red. Is the cold laser machine expensive? Uh, well, the better machines are very expensive. The machine that I use in the office is around ten thousand dollars, but you can get inexpensive machines. There's a Delta laser, which is a cold laser, which is about $300. So if you email me, uh, I am looking at that because one of my goals was to find a cold laser that was inexpensive. And so the Delta laser fits the bill. And when I email all of you back, I'll send you information about the Delta laser. It's, uh, it's inexpensive. It's a good quality, rechargeable cold laser. Why do optometrists use darkened rooms and your program uses overhead lights? Well, in syntonics, um, it's usually stated that you should use a dimly lit room, mainly because in syntonics, it's, it's a broad spectrum light. It's not very precise. Now, I'm studying with Dr. Agrapar, 
and he requires that the laser is used in a totally dark room. That is because the light is so precise, the wavelength is so precise, any unwanted light will interfere with the narrowness of the wavelength. Can you do the light therapy more than once per day? Um, I usually recommend only once a day, but you can do it twice a day. Remember, this is gentle therapy. Uh, Dr. Agrapar, in many of his treatments, he'll do one treatment and wait a week. So you want the body to respond to the light. So more is not necessarily better. Um, in some cases, patients that I have that have glaucoma with high pressures, I recommend that they do the laser treatment twice a day. In most situations, all you need to do is to do the laser once a day. Um, the question is, I've been using light therapy 10 minutes a day. Okay to increase it to 20 minutes. Um, you can try 20 minutes. I don't think it's necessary. You know, a lot of doctors feel that the effect that takes place occurs during the first five minutes, that any additional treatment is not going to have an effect. So um, try it for 20, monitor your vision, see if that produces um, um, maybe uh, a better feeling in your eye, less discomfort, etc. cetera. Uh, we have a, somebody's hand is up. Let me see. Uh, Nancy, do you hear me? Uh, yes. Do you have a question? I can hear you fine. Good. Do you have a question? I was wondering, yes. Have you incorporated this, the new things that you're learning from having been in, in France with your patients that are nearby? And have you seen results as a result? No, I haven't been incorporating it yet because it's a two-year course and I just took one lesson. So I am okay. by far not an expert. But Dr. Agrapar is interested in assisting me in treating patients. So we are looking for people who might be interested in coming. Dr. Ag Agrapar is going to be visiting the center in May. Uh, he hasn't actually booked a flight and committed the dates, but we've been communicating. He wants to come in May. So we are looking for patients who may want to come and receive treatment by him. He also wants to coach me and monitor me. So what I would do would be to send records, send pictures of the eye, and then he would give me directions on what light to use, uh, how long, and what frequency. So I'm at the early stages of my education with him. So give the office a call and we can put you down on a list if you are interested, okay? Thank you. I wondered if, how does the light, the color light therapy I've been doing the last seven years, how does that, is that compare with the laser? I mean, laser gives light to the cells. Well, Dr. Tina Carew felt that the laser had no additional effect than the syntonic light therapy that you're receiving. Where the laser can have an effect is treating the lymph and treating the bone marrow. It may have an additional effect. So um, I'll send you information about the Delta laser. It's a cold laser that is uh, not as expensive as the Thor laser we're using. The Thor laser is about $10,000. The Delta laser, I believe, is around three hundred. Thank you for that information. Okay, thank you. Uh, Susan? Susan has a question. Susan? Uh, yes. Yeah, yes, hi. I'm here. How are you doing? Hi. Good. Uh, recently, my husband and I were at the Pittsburgh Eye Protocol, and at the end of the three-day program, we were told to do the light therapy 20 minutes a day. And I took the, uh, the three-day program in Pittsburgh back in 2010, and at the end of the program, we were told 10 minutes a day. So I was wondering, 
and based on what you've just been saying, 10 minutes a day should be sufficient then. Yeah, I uh, think 10 minutes. 20. I don't think it's necessary for 20. A lot okay. of optometrists recommend 20. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think 10 is adequate. In fact, some people feel, Dr. Agrapar feels that five minutes is the maximum. Uh -huh. You don't okay. need more than five. So we've been reducing the amount of time. The same thing with microcurrent. I've been reducing the amount of time. I used to do all my microcurrent programs, started out an hour, an hour and a half program. Mm -hmm. And now most of them are 30 minutes. Yeah. And I have some patients that are reducing it down to 15. Mm -hmm. So okay. um, I think that the, the energy is impregnated or registered in the body very quickly. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just our human mind. It feels like, oh, we need to do a longer treatment. We're going to get more of an effect. Right. Yeah. So well, I think, I think 10 minutes is more than adequate, but you know, listen to your body, do 10 and do 20. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, I can't do a national controlled study. I learned from my patients. And right. if you come back to me and say, Dr. Kondrat, when I do 20 minutes, I'm feeling so much better and my vision's better. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to think, well, maybe 20 is better than 10. And should the light therapy be done every day? Um, no, it's not necessary. Try to do it every day. Mm -hmm. I yeah, think every it... other day. It depends. If, if you have glaucoma, then it's mandatory to do it every day because it helps lower the pressure. Okay. If you have macular degeneration, we're trying to stimulate the retina. It's probably only necessary to do it every other day. Okay. Well, thank but you. these are all, these are all things that I'm learning and my best teachers are my patients are you. <laughs> so, right. You know. Okay. Thank you so very thank, much. Thank you. And we have another question. Um, when I do my color therapy, the colors change throughout the process. Red becomes orange. Green becomes gray. What causes this? Well, remember I talked about complementary colors. That when you do look at a light for a long period of time and then close your eyes, you'll see the complementary color. So it's not unusual that green and gray and red and orange, you'll see these. So it has to do with the rods and cones in the back of the eye. So... Um, and you may be doing the treatment too long and it may be producing eye strain. So everybody's different. You know, some of you are very sensitive and maybe all you need is five minutes of the color therapy and that's good enough for you. So, um, you know, we say 10 minutes, but it's not a hard rule. Um, experiment, see what you like better, see what helps your vision and see what helps your overall emotional state. Um, a question referring to the microcurrent time. If I don't have enough time for my full 30 minutes, would 10 to 15 minutes be better than not at all? Yes, indeed. In fact, with many patients I'm doing is I'm making the program 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and they're doing that program once or doing it twice. I have to caution you and I'm underscoring it, putting it in bold. If you have a 30 minute program, don't just do 15 minutes because you're missing the last 15 minutes of frequencies. Every 30 second to a minute, you get a new frequency pair. So when you're doing microcurrent, it's not like you're just getting the same frequency for 30 minutes. So that is important to understand. So if you are interested in shortening your machine, any of you are interested in shortening your machine, give the office a call. I can reprogram your machine and shorten the time. Also, we are having a uh, Inspirstar level one training, and this will enable you to change the parameters on your machine. I really believe that I want to empower you. So if you own a microcurrent machine, there's no reason in the world why you can't program the machine you know, changing uh, frequencies and patterns and time and current level. So uh, if you are interested, give the office a call. It's called the Inspirstar Level 1. And that's going to be part of our case conference in October. 
at the Dolphin Beach Resort. It's a wonderful hotel. October's a great time of the year to come to Florida. You will be trained, you will be certified to be able to add programs on your machine. Of course, you have to have some computer knowledge. If you've never turned on a PC computer, forget it. But if you are computer literate and you know how to open a file and save a file, I think you can do it. Okay, any other questions? Um, I am very happy. I think this was a really good webinar. I want to thank all of you for asking me great questions. This is being recorded, so I'll be sending it to you and also send you information on the Delta Laser, information on um, get, getting trained for the microcurrent level one, and also for the Syntonic conference that's coming up in May. So I want to thank all of you. Um, what well, I think there might be another question here. Uh, Nancy, do you have another question? I guess Nancy doesn't have another oh, question. Oh, I didn't. <laughs> oh, you forgot to put your hand down. Your hand's up. It's, it's probably tired. Oh, I don't know how to. Okay. Just so click I click it. on it. Lower. Oh, okay. Sorry. Now your hands. Okay. <laughs> There's always one in every class that likes to joke around. All right. Okay, thanks, thanks everybody. Oh, we got another one, Robert. Um, uh, he wants to know if his earlier program can be restored. Yes, uh, give the office a call and we can take care of that. Okay, thanks everybody. I enjoyed the webinar and I look forward to um, next month. And I think we're gonna be talking about pulse electromagnetic field and microcurrent. But if you have any other topics or suggestions, please email me because these webinars are for you. Um, I don't know uh, what information you'd like to have. I don't know what information you need. Uh, I'm here to help you get the best results out of your microcurrent program and your treatment. So thanks, everybody.